Hello, and thank you for being here. Welcome to Greet the Week. I am Mona Duncan, and consciousness is becoming aware. And our conscious, nothing ever enters our consciousness whole. It's kind of like, you know, digesting food. You take in a bite, then it takes a while for it to digest and to settle in. So today's topic is on uh, you matter. Everyone is important and we all matter. So bring the bring this up all the way. In mattering and realizing that you matter, it is learning to receive the gift of yourself. So here's a little poem that I have to kind of go along with this. Gifted with talents uniquely your own. Acceptance of self grants courage to roam, to walk, to run, to fly, to be, to live and give unselfishly, a masterpiece impossible to clone. So uh, I was thinking about who we are as individuals, all eight plus billion of us on planet Earth. We are formed in our mother's womb. It's the only way for us to come into being. We are deformed all too often by the ways of the world. The things that we see here, we have senses that bring information into us internally, but our decisions and everything are really from the inside out. And also in the process, we have a tendency to become conformed to the ways of others. Well, I like, I like that style. I like this. It kind of goes with reality therapies, uh, uh, quality world pictures, but we become conformed sometimes to things that maybe we shouldn't be conformed to. But the thing of it is, is the bottom line, we are transformed by words. We are transformed by the words we speak. We are transformed by the things we believe. We are transformed by the words we think. So, and in using our words, Every word has power. It has power in that it is the input we get from others from infancy on. They have power by the self-talk that, you know, where all, where all does this come from? And what is, what, who else talking to us in our mind when it is the self-talk? What about those limiting beliefs, those things that we want to believe that we can't quite or those things that we're not willing to even consider? They have power. What about all the input from the media, whether it's books to be read or papers or uh, just an input, you know, the, the songs and what they say. And they may give us the reason to dance, but there may be words in there that uh, would be powerful that maybe could help or maybe could harm. We have a tendency to uh, have power toward those that we value. And maybe even a type of power toward those that we devalue. And so in looking at becoming who we are and key words, two of the key words is self-image. And what does it, what does it mean? A self-image is the picture that we have of ourselves. And looking at everything in life is pretty much on a continuum. And it may be a fact or it may be false. It may be something you believe. Maybe something that uh, you think you're too tall or too short or too this or too that. It's the self-image that you have of you. And it may be legitimate or it may not be. You know, sometimes we can. And usually what produces that self-image is based on the way we see that what we look like, realizing that we can really never see even our face, we can see parts of our body, but not our back and not our face. Uh, the physical prowess as to how can you know how graceful we are, or whatever, or how how many marathons we can run or play ball in a certain way, and then the health of our intelligence has a whole lot to do with how we see ourselves, the image of us. But another one of those real powerful words is self-esteem, and what is esteem? Esteem is the value that you place on you and who you are and what you do. And again, it could be low as 
or it can be high. And it's pretty much better to bring things to middle ground so we can see the positives of both. And that self-esteem is based on the confidence you have in yourself, your abilities, your relationships, what all you can and do accomplish. Or maybe it would be on the low level of not seeing those things as being up to date. So pretty much our knowledge of who we are boils down to our internal knowing and what we do know and what we don't know, what we really listen to and really find out. There is a universal and a biblical principle that kind of goes around it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And uh, there's a lot of, that it's a lot of good, you know, to, to like who you are. Maybe, maybe love is a little too strong, but at least like who you are. And it means, you know, love your neighbor, whoever your neighbor is, whether, and we have more neighbors than we may realize, but just loving people as a whole, not less than, you know, because that comes across as being indifferent or prejudiced and certainly not more than because that also can come across as being superior or perfect. Dr. Mary Lee Henderson told me one time, she said, when I love me, I can reach out and help. But when I do not love me, I am insecure and uninvolved. And then I read a thing recently about Silicon Valley and how all of these, you know, top producers, they will spend 10 to 15 minutes a day, have everybody stop because everyone in the valley, almost everyone in the individual companies have a group playtime. And they are really touting this and expanding it and inviting more people to do the same thing in your work or in your home or whatever to take 10 minutes a day to have a group playtime because this really helps tremendously to remove biases that we may have toward our 8 billion neighbors. So SAV, SAV is a word, S-A-L-V-E, that was coined by Martha Beck, who was a life coach. And she came up with this, you know, salve. It's something that you, it's an ointment that you would rub on to help something to heal, whether it's a sore muscle or whether it's an actual wound. But anyway, Martha Beck came up with salve, S-A-L-V-E. And it is self looking, you know, primarily who we are individually as well as collectively. But it's self-acceptance self-love, self-value, and self-esteem. And I have a quote here from Maya Angelou that was in Oprah Magazine back in 2005 that I just love. I think it's so powerful. And Maya said, finally, I said, God loves me. It still humbles me that this force that makes leaves and fleas and stars and rivers and you loves me, me, Maya Angelou. I'm amazing. I can do anything and I can do it well. Any good thing, I can do it. That's why I am who I am. Yes, because God loves me and I'm amazed at it and I'm grateful for it. So be grateful for who you are. And I suggest that this is who you are. This is you. You are unique. You are one of a kind. You are inclusive, exclusive. You are exceptional. You are irreplaceable. You are rare. You are uncommon. You are authentic. You are genuine and real. Sometimes even if we're, uh, well, anyway, you just are all of these wonderful things. And being without wax, you know, back many years ago, artwork, sculptures, and so forth, uh, there might be a little uh, error in extra in making the sculpture extra rock was chipped out and so they would take wax and put it in there but the thing of it is is whenever the moisture or the heat was high the wax would begin to melt and run so it's being real and genuine as to who we are without having a lot of wax in there and so you are a work of art with a designer la label and uh, I just and so also we need to know what our self-worth is. We have infinite worth and value. We are an original work of art with a designer label. 
We are completely unique, totally lovable. And when we really get honest with ourselves, we are blessed beyond measure. So here is a little checking your price tag from a friend of mine, Dina Netherland Shafero. And I really like this. She said, if you're not being treated with love and respect, check your own price tag. Perhaps you've marked yourself down. It's you who tells people what you're worthy, what, you, what your worth is by what you accept. Get off of the clearance rack and get behind the glass where they keep the valuables. The bottom line, value yourself more. If you don't, no one else will and pass it on. You may need help getting off the clearance rack. And so, nature versus nurture. Carl Jung tells us that the world will ask you who you are. And if you don't know, the world will tell you. And so, it's uh, going back and being true to ourselves. I like to compare self-esteem to building a house. In that, we have been given the necessary ingredients to become who we truly are are there. But sometimes, even though it's there, it needs some personal construction. And so anything that appreciates goes up in value. And so to appreciate who you are, what you do know, what you don't know, uh, to appreciate what you are proficient in, what you're not quite so proficient in, and begin to realize how that there's always that ability to learn and to grow and appreciate and value yourself. So thank you for being here and many blessings and uh, many blessings.